Hey, folks, thanks for being here. Glad you could spend a little time with me today. And uh, I was just, uh, it's always fun when I come into the show. Ahmad, my producer, always says to me, so what are we talking about today? What are we talking about today? So today we're going to talk about something that a lot of you ask me, well, not a lot of you, almost all of you ask me about all day, every day, is how do I get from where I am health-wise to where I want to be? How do we make the transition to better health? And that's the topic of the show today. How do you make the transition to better health? And it's important because... If you read as much as I do, you would see the statistics out there and the research that's out there, and it's scary. Uh, one thing here, I just, I just pulled this article out. Millennial bowel cancer risks. Young people have four times, are, are four times more likely to develop the disease than previous generations due to, in the title, their terrible diets. Bowel cancer has long been associated with older people. Now three in ten people diagnosed with the disease are under 55. So experts are warning that diet and inactivity are driving up the rates globally. So it's not just here in the United States. We don't have a a corner on that market. Targeted testing and screening for middle-aged adults uh, can cut rates, uh, has cut rates for uh, for people over 50. And now experts warn you need to start screening people as early as the 20s. Isn't that wild? A friend of mine, I I had dinner with a friend of mine the other day, and I said, I hadn't seen you in a while. What's new? And he said, unfortunately, a cousin of mine had passed away. And I said, what happened? He goes, well... He wasn't feeling well, and he didn't want to do anything about it. And he finally went and got some tests done. He says his whole colon was eaten away with bowel cancer. And they said he's probably not going to make it another day or two. And sure enough, he, he passed. Now, that's a horrible story, but a lot of the things that we talk about on this show are self-induced. You did them to yourself. And wouldn't that stink if you were laying on your deathbed and you realized that what you did caused you to be there? And it happens a lot, believe me, because I have patients and listeners call me all the time, say, Dr. Joe, it's me, my, my, my wife, my mother, my father, and they're desperate. They're at their wit's end. What do we do now? And then I ask them questions, and inevitably, 100% of the time, their lifestyle led them to this demise, unfortunately. So it's an unprecedented number of, of young people being diagnosed with bowel cancer. And again, it's due to poor diet and lack of exercise, according to the study. Millennials, those born between 1980 and 1995, are four times more likely to develop rectal tumors stemming from the large intestine compared to those born around the 1950s. So the health of this generation is declining. With all the knowledge that we have in medicine and in natural health care, and with all the advances we've made, MRIs and CAT scans, and you can screen the body now for high cholesterol, and you can spot cancer when it's just a very, very tiny now with screenings that we have, this generation is sicker than ever. In fact, this generation is the first generation ever to have a shorter life expectancy than their parents by five years. So if you have kids or grandkids, their life expectancy is five years less than yours. That's scary. So that's why we're talking today about making the transition to a better lifestyle. An alarming 3 in 10 rectal cancer diagnoses are now in patients below 55. Young people are also twice the risk of developing colon tumors. The study warns that data should be a warning sign that this generation faces an epidemic of, of the digestive diseases and suggests we begin screening people in their 20s. Wow. So this is a big issue. Now, something I see a lot in my office, and I talk a lot about digestion, um, I see things uh, where the stomach is spasmed and pushing up into the diaphragm. And when the stomach spasms and isn't digesting food properly, you're not breaking your proteins down into amino acids. The amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. So they're not being absorbed properly. <clears throat> so you're not getting the proper uh, nu- absorption of your nutrients. And you have a bad diet anyway. So a lot of this, and the article didn't discuss this, but you and I need to talk about it, a lot of the problems we're seeing are physical not just chemical. The stomach can move out of place, push up against the diaphragm. You might have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating. These are all signs that you may have to manually manipulate the digestive system. And I see that a lot. Now, I'm a chiropractor. My team of doctors, we're all chiropractors. Now, I work with a full uh, spectrum of doctors, neurologists, neurosurgeons, vascular surgeons, psychiatrists, psychologists, female health experts. So we work with the medical profession, chiropractic profession. We all work together, not in the same office, but we work to get you well. So I associate with doctors that think like I think. How do we get people well? So many times they'll send patients to me and say, Joe, there's something physical here that we're missing. We work on them, send them back, and vice versa. So if you have acid reflux or heartburn or burping or gas or bloating, it could be that we need to actually adjust or pull your stomach down away from the diaphragm. 
So that's one step we can do to make the transition to a better lifestyle. Number of things can increase your risk, including diet, of course. A diet high in red meat or processed meats and low in fiber can increase your risk. Weight, bowel cancer is more common in overweight people. Exercise and activity can increase your risk. And alcohol and smoking. High alcohol intake and smoking can increase your risk of getting bowel cancer. So some of the symptoms, got to know this, bloody stools, changes in your bowel habit as, as uh, too frequent, looser stools, abdominal pain. Now, here's the thing, too. If you eat red beets, and you've heard me talk about beets in the past, and beets are high in nitrates, and nitrites, nitrates convert into nitric oxide, which opens up your blood vessels. And I had somebody do this not long ago. They called me up, and uh, they had eaten beets. Uh, the night before, and that next morning when they went to the bathroom, the, the everything was red in the bowl. And they lost their minds, and oh my God, I'm bleeding to death. And the first question I ask when people ask me about blood in, in, in the stools is, did you eat beets the night before? And usually the answer is, yes, I did. Why didn't anybody tell me that? Well, I'm telling you, if you eat beets, it's going to turn out red. Don't worry about it. So young diagnoses are increasing. The more young people are engaging in lifestyle habits that increase their risk. And so you really need to start taking these things seriously. So we got to talk about making the transition to better nutrition. Now, health conditions that are linked to nutrition. Let's see if I have time to cover these before our first break. Heart disease, cancer, osteoporosis in the, uh, in the bones and in the teeth, obesity, Alzheimer's disease, high blood pressure, allergies, digestive disorders, fatigue, mental issues, depression, high uh, mood swings, men mental alertness, sleep disorders, skin conditions, wrinkles, pimples, blackheads, and stress. Got them done. Those are just some of the diseases that are linked to nutrition. And in fact, all diseases, at one way or another, are going to be linked to what you're putting in your body. So it's not just what you ingest, it's what you digest. So if you have acid reflux and heartburn and burping and gas and bloating, it could be that you have a digestive enzyme insufficiency. It could be that you're not eating the right foods. It could be that you have acid reflux, you have a leaky gut. All these things are signs that something's wrong. So we're talking today about making the transition to better health and better nutrition. I'll open up the lines. If you have a question, the number's 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-J-O-E. My website, drjoesposito.com, is available 24 hours a day if you want to make appointments, listen to archive radio shows, uh, watch videos that I've done, read articles. That's there for you 24-7. That's drjoesposito.com. So, folks, the number here at the studio, 844-44-DR-JOE. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Joe, don't go anywhere. We're going to be. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. I am so glad you're spending a little time with me today. We're talking today about making the transition to, a, to better nutrition or a better lifestyle. And people always say to me, well, how do you do it? What do you do? What do I st where do I start? I don't know what to do. And so we hold your hand very gently, and we tell you how to do it. So we got a couple of callers. Hang on there, folks. I'm going to get to you. Uh, what you need to do, you need to determine where your issues are. And it's like uh, being an alcoholic. You have to admit you're an alcoholic before you can start working on it. So what I want you to do is think about your current eating habits. Now, when I do this seminar, um, I, I have people write down. I take, I take a second. I say, think about your current eating habits. Do you eat when you're hungry? Do you eat when it's time? Do you eat when you're stressed? Do you eat because uh, you got home from work and it's time? you're supposed to eat before you go to bed? Think about that because there's a difference between hunger and cravings. And that's important for you to understand. Hunger means you need nutrients to make your body work. Cravings mean you go, you know, I could really go for some uh, coconut cake, as I saw today on the trough. Here at the studio, we have this counter. And anybody has any food they don't want, they kind of throw it on the trough, and then it's gobbled up. And I saw some uh, frozen coconut cake today. Hmm, interesting there. Um, but that, if I'm thinking, oh, I could really go for a piece of cake, that's usually a craving. Hunger means, you know, it's time I got to eat. I, I haven't eaten for a while, and I need some nutrients. So think about that first. And whenever it's a craving, stop. I don't want you eating because you're having a craving. And here's my secret that works for me, and it might work for you too, is get the bad food out of the house. Because if it's in the house, chances are you're going to eat it. You're sitting there watching TV, and you go, hmm, I can go for some potato chips. <gasps> Guess what? I happen to have potato chips. I'm going to go get some. And then if you're like me, you think, well, I ate half a bag, but they're still going to have potato chips in the house. If I finish this bag, then there'll be no more potato chips. So I can get the bad food out of the house, just like Dr. Joe said, by eating it. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is it can't be brought into the house. Ahmad's laughing. You've, you ever done that, Ahmad? Have you ever done anything? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I you can okay. see that. You're, you're, you know, you're mortal? there, you're like, well, you're yeah, why not? Eat? Yeah, Ahmad is mortal. I did not know this. I, I thought he was superhuman, so... Yeah, so if it's in the house, you're going to eat it. So get the bad food out of the house. 
And remember, if it's a craving versus hunger, and start thinking about it. You get home from work, do you have to have dinner? Well, not necessarily. If you're not hungry, you don't have to have dinner. You can skip dinner. In fact, that's one of the best things you can do is something called intermittent fasting. And what you do is you skip either dinner or breakfast, and that gives your body a chance to digest and utilize the food that it has. It burns fat, and I, I did a show on that a while ago. It's not just what you eat. It's when you eat. And one thing you can do is try to eat well, but eat within an eight-hour period every day. And if you can do that one or two days a week, that's rocking. That's really great for the body. It gives the body a rest. Right, let's go to callers. Uh, if you have a number, a question, 844 doctor Joe. Will, how can we make your day better? Hey, Dr. Joe, big fan. Thank you. Uh, I think I'm one of the strange millennials that listens to you. Uh, oh, no. You're actually interesting. I was talking to my boss the other day, and he, say, he says it's amazing. Your show attracts people that would not normally listen to stations like this. So uh, yeah. but I'm glad you're listening, and, and a lot of your, 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 uh, your fellow millennials are listening. But thanks for listening. Go, go on. I'm sorry. All right. Well, um, I'm calling for my dad. He's 59, pretty healthy guy. Um, doesn't go to the doctor tons, but when he does, he, they say he's mostly fine. Um, but he's got a thing. We can't figure it out. And he actually had like a sinus infection this winter and got uh -huh. it all cleared up. Right. Um, but when he, if we, when the family's together or anything, when he gets cough, if he gets laughing really hard, yeah. it turns into this hacking, terrible cough. Yes. Cough. Mm -hmm. We almost don't even want to like get him to laugh. Him laugh. Right. And it happens year round. It's been happening like the last two or three years. And like, we assumed maybe it would get fixed when the doctor was looking at him uh, this, I guess, November, sure. December. Uh -huh. um, but it did not. Okay. We're trying to figure Men out what the yeah. deal is. What usually happens with that, Will, it's what we talked about earlier. You have some acid reflux. And the acid comes up into the throat. It can irritate the vocal cords. And a lot of singers have issues with that. Um, because they, obviously they're singing a lot, but people use their voice like me uh, on radio. Um, if you have that, it's chances are it's acid coming up into the throat. So if he has acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, rapid heart rate, because if the stomach is up against the diaphragm, the same nerve that controls the stomach controls the heart, that can cause rapid heart rate. These could all be signs that it is uh, acid reflux. If you go to my website, drjoesposito.com, Go to, mm -hmm. and I think it's uh, under blog, Dr. Joe's Articles, and it's like the fifth or sixth one down. I wrote an article on GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Read that article and see if it reminds you of your father, even with some symptoms. And if it is, you probably want to send them in. We can take a look at them. Okay. Okay? All right. Well, awesome. All right. Well, well thanks, for, thanks for listening. Yeah. Thanks for telling yeah, your friends about you. the show. All right. Bye-bye. Uh, let's keep going here. Lisa, how can we make your day better? Hey, Dr. Joe, how are you doing today? I'm happy you called. I'm doing well. Uh, I was calling. Um, my mom, when she eats, everything goes through, and she has to go to the bathroom for diarrhea. What, what could she do for that? It's Many times, it could be several things. It could be an infection. It could be that she doesn't have good uh, uh, bacteria in her colon. But there's a little valve between her belly button and your belly button and your right hip. If you drew a line between the belly button and the right hip, and that valve is called the ileocecal valve. Now, again, it could be something more serious, but if that valve is stuck open, food just passes right through you. If it's uh -huh. stuck closed, you have constipation. Uh -huh. So uh, what she can do is go between her belly button and her hip right in the middle there and just lay. You, you can do it for her if you want to lay on her back and just relax and push in there. Okay. And you're going to feel something that kind of feels like the tip of your nose, that, that kind of consistency. And just rub in a clockwise motion. And rub it for maybe 30, 40 seconds and see if you can get that valve to be stimulated and push relatively hard. You don't have to hurt her, but, you know, enough to get in there. Uh -huh. And if we can do that and if that valve is stuck open, maybe we can get it to relax like any other muscle, massage it, and maybe it'll start opening and closing. If that doesn't work, she definitely needs to go get that checked, maybe go to gastroenterologist or have a stool sample to find out if there's something else going on. Okay. And also, I have one other question. I have something in my neck. Could that be a pinched nerve? Almost always is a pinched nerve, yes. Whenever you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, it's almost always a pinched nerve. And it's usually pretty easy to fix. And patients come literally in my office every single day. I've been doing this for 33 years. And they'll say, well, I had this pain forever. Why didn't I fix this sooner? And I'm like, I don't know why you didn't fix it sooner. You could have come seen us 30 years ago. <laughs> so chances are, if it's been there for more than three days, it's probably a pinched nerve. Could be something else. It's probably a pinched nerve. And you want to get it fixed because the sooner you fix it, the easier it's going to be and the less permanent damage can occur. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. Lisa. Joe. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for the call. So, folks, if you have a question, 844 doctor Joe And uh, Lisa, make, and that number, by the way, rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. So if, if you call when if I'm not on the air and you have a question or you want to make an appointment or whatever, order supplements, it's always there. Um, but also, I should have told Lisa this. Sorry, Lisa, I hope you're still listening. Um, for P I, I always recommend these two supplements. You've heard me talk about them, Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. 
their powders, uh, fruits and vegetables in a powder form, prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, and very easy to absorb. And that's one of the issues that I have. Like I said, it's not just what you ingest, it's what you digest. And so if you're not digesting your food, the super greens, the essential source is a complete multivitamin, very easy to absorb. Essential source is about 10 servings of raw fruits and vegetables, 10 servings in one scoop. So really easy to absorb, relatively inexpensive, a dollar a scoop for each one of them, $2 a day. And I recommend everyone take that because that's the starting point to get your nutrition turning around and get on the path to good nutrition. And those are available on my website, drjoesposito.com, or you can also uh, Amazon. If you have Amazon, you can go to Amazon. We have an Amazon account as well there, Amazon page. Folks, the number here is 844-44-DR-JOE. Uh, do me a favor. Don't go anywhere. Tell all your friends about the show. We're going to be right back. Hey, everybody. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Mod's laughing at me. I forgot to push my on button. So <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> I am Dr. Joe Esposito. Glad you're here. And uh, what we're talking about today is making the transition to better nutrition, transitioning out of the lifestyle that you have and into the uh, better lifestyle. So let's think about some eating habits. You use food as a reward. You know, I've been watching what I eat for a week. I've been really good so I can blank. You know, one, one whatever donut isn't going to hurt me because that's how you sl go down that slippery slope. Food for comfort. When I'm sad, I eat blank, uh, whatever it is. Well, you know, what a day I've had. I need a glass. Of, I love this one. I need a glass of wine to unwind. Did you know you could do a glass of chamomile tea and unwind? You don't have to have wine because wine is loaded with sugar. And in fact, if I have time, we're going to talk about drinks that have as much or more sugar than soda that you think are good for you. Wine. So people say, I have to have wine. It helps relax me. And Dr. Joe, Dr. Joe, I heard that red wine is good for your heart. Well, it's true. Red wine is actually good for your heart. But here's the catch. Red wine is loaded with a lot of nutrients. Uh, it, not a lot, but it has some. It also has something in it called resver resveratrol. Resveratrol can actually reverse, to a point, the aging process. You have something on your genes, not your pants, but your genes in your, in your cells called telomeres. And when you're young, the telomeres are very long and active. And as you get older, the telomeres get shorter. And that's how we can base your biological age. We can do a test of your telomeres to see how active they are. And if the telomere shrinks to a certain point, then you die. It's very simple. So resveratrol is an antioxidant. helps protect that telomere and can actually bring back some life into it. But you have to drink red wine. Well, you don't have to drink red wine because it's not the wine that's good for you, by the way. It's the grapes. So it's the red grapes, not the red wine that makes it. Because why isn't white wine good for you? Why isn't uh, scotch good for you? It's the red wine. It's the grapes. It's the, it's the antioxidants and, the, and the, the, the plant-based compounds in the grapes that are good for you. But if you want to get the medical benefits of it, first of all, you have to drink organic wine. Because organic wine is the one that has resveratrol. If it's sprayed with pesticides, it doesn't grow. It's not getting exposed to fungus. And the reason grapes grow uh, or produce the resveratrol is because they're exposed to fungus, and the resveratrol protects them from the fungus. So it has to be organic wine. You have to drink about a case a day in order to get a real medicinal benefit. Now, that doesn't mean I'm giving you permission to drink a case of wine a day. Well, Dr. Joe said a case of wine a day is good for me. It makes me look younger. And then, of course, there's the side effects of wine that will actually age you more. So if you want to take resveratrol as a supplement, you can do that. They can get it from grapes. They can get it from uh, knotweed. Japanese knotweed is another source of resveratrol. But if you don't damage the telomeres, you don't have to worry about repairing the telomeres. Make sense? I know it does. If you don't damage it, you don't have to fix it. And that's why you got to be careful about what you're doing as a, as a treater to unwind. You could be doing a lot more uh, harm than good. You know, food is a crutch. I can't start my day without, well, what does most people say, a cup of coffee. You know, I need uh, coffee to give me energy in the afternoon. Well, here's the thing. Most of you are dehydrated. So as you transition to a better lifestyle, why don't you start drinking a lot more water, 8, 10, 12 glasses a day? You'll be amazed how quickly you'll probably get off that coffee. Because one of the reasons you're tired is because you're dehydrated. When you rehydrate yourself, you don't need all that coffee. And if you're going to do coffee, and I don't think you should, but if you're going to do coffee, I recommend organic coffee only. Because a lot of chemicals and pesticides are sprayed on coffee, and you don't want to take the chance of exposing yourself to that. that that's why organic is going to be your best bet. All right, let's call. Let's go back to the calls. Catherine, how can we make your day better? 
Well, uh, Dr. Joe, I'm 75 years old, and I've had post-herpetic neuralgia for about a year now. It's it's quite uh, debilitating, and I'm wondering if there's anything I can do to reverse that. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, there probably is. Uh, herpetic neuralgia, you had a shingles outbreak? Is that what we're talking about? Yes. Okay. I, I had the all I had all the original symptoms, and all I've got now is the, 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 pain. Chron- yeah. the chronic pain. Okay. So whenever somebody has a herpes outbreak, whether it's shingles, general herpes, oral herpes, there's over like 100 different types of herpes. Most of us, if we got tested, are going to have some type of herpes virus in our body. A couple of things you want to avoid. Peanuts. Peanuts have arginine, which can actually stimulate the outbreak. Uh, so be careful with peanuts. That's a biggie. Some people have reactions even to cashews. Just think about that if, when you have outbreaks if you've been exposed. But what I find with the pers- uh, post-herpetic neuralgia, it's along a rib. And it's usually the bone in the spine is twisted out of place, pinching what we call the nerve root, the nerve that is wrapping around the rib. So after you have the outbreak and, and the, the shingle settle down, you need to get the spine checked. And if the bones are out of place, put them back in place again to take the pressure off the nerve. That would be the first thing I would recommend, and that's usually the thing that solves it. All right. Okay. Okay, Catherine. Thanks so much. And, folks, if you do want to make an appointment, uh, this number, 844-44-DR-JOE, does ring through to my offices when I'm not on the air. But uh, many times when people have uh, conditions like that, there's a pinched nerve that was never resolved, and as time went on, it just got worse and worse and worse. All right, another caller. Deborah, how can we make your day better? Uh, yes, I was in the emergency room a couple of weeks ago and got a CT in my lower abdomen, abdomen for kidney stones. And after I got home and came off the medication with the pain minutes, I was reading it, and it said something about me having compressed disc. Uh-huh. And then I realized the last time I had gone in my doctor's office, she'd checked my height. I'd gone from 5'7", it was 5'7 and a half, to 5'6". Okay. Is there anything I can do about compressed disc? Uh, Yeah, what happens is the reason discs compress or wear out is because the bones are out of alignment rubbing up against each other. So people always think about chiropractic care. I've got a pinched nerve. Go to the chiropractor, get it unpinched. Great. But if the bones are out of alignment, they're rubbing up against each other, and the disc is wearing out or getting compressed. So first off, we have to find out which bones are out of place that started this whole thing. Put them back in place. In my offices, every table we have is a very gentle traction table. And we pull apart the vertebrae, and as we gently pull apart the vertebrae, we suck fluid into the discs. And most cases, in fact, Dr. Gale, one of my doctors, and I were just talking a couple of days ago on one patient who did everything we said, followed her appointments, took the supplements, took Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, ate right, and she took an x-ray again 10 weeks later, 12 weeks later, and you can actually see the disc starting to regenerate. Now, it'll never be perfect, Deb, but at this point in your life, it's going to get better or it's going to get worse. It's not going to stay the same. Okay. So you want to find a bone that's out of place, put it back in place, and if you can find somebody, well, we have them, traction tables to open up the discs, that would would be my suggestion. Okay. That sounds great. Thank you very much. Thanks, Deb. I appreciate it. And uh, and like I said with the nutrition, too, you have to give the discs nutrition. You have to give the whole body nutrition in order to function normally. And that's why I keep pushing the Dr. Joe's Super Greens and the Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They're the ultimate, I consider, the ultimate starting point for good nutrition. And those are on my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe to get to my website. And it, you'll come up with Health Plus Wellness Center. comes up first. My picture's there. That's our, that's our office. The name of our office is Health Plus Wellness Center. And, folks, I want you to do something else. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. We send out lots of good information there as well uh, because we want to give you the information that you need to get well and stay well. So, oh, I hear music. That means it's break time. Folks, if you have a question, 844-44-DR-JOE. You can also send me questions through Facebook, but make sure you just like my page. Uh, don't send me a friend request because I'm just about at my maximum, and if you do, I'm just going to send you a request to just like my page. Um, that's on Facebook. Instagram, too. Send out lots of good information there as well. Uh, the website is drjoesposito.com. If you want to get supplements, my books, other supplements we have, too, those are also on Amazon if you have an Amazon account. Hey, don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. Tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. Yeah, I remember to push the button on to put, turn my mic on. See, Ahmad makes fun of me because I'm old, I think. That's why. You'll be old someday, pal. You'll see what it's like. Yeah. So, Anyway, glad to be here. I am Dr. Joe. We're talking today about making the transition to a better nutrition and a better lifestyle. There's a couple of things you really have to do a little soul searching on if your goal is to get that transition over. And some people actually use food as punishment. I'm so overweight, you know what, who cares anymore? Anybody ever say that? What's one more 
donut, cookie, cake, ice cream, piece of bread. And many people get that way. And it's not that it's it's not just being overweight. That's the problem. It's that the foods you have to eat to get overweight is the problem. I'm talking about health today, not weight. But in order to get heavy, you eat bad food. It's really hard to get heavy eating salads unless you're putting a lot of you know cheesy dressings on it. So think about that. Whenever you put something in your body, I want you to ask yourself a simple question. Is this going to nourish my body or is this going to take away nourishment from my body? And if the answer is the latter, I want you to not do it. Just that simple. Look at the food. Is this going to be good or bad? Or how about this? I haven't thought of this one in a while here. WWJD. What would Joe do? I'll get a little bracelets. You know, am I going to get in trouble for saying that? I don't know. I might get in trouble for that, Ahmad. I'm not sure. <laughs> get the bracelets. What would Joe do? And if I'll eat it, you can eat it. If I won't eat it, you can't eat it. How about that? Just that simple. And it really isn't hard. It's really simple. And you'll save so much money because most of the good food is a cheap food. I made a crock pot of soup the other day. All organic, carrots, onions, potatoes, some uh, veggie bouillon, and a big thing of, of, of beans, a mix, mixture of bees and beans and peas and things like that. It was $6, $7 total. We'll go $7. $7 total. It was I don't, what big crock pot that I have. Now, how much can I eat on that? I, I give it away. I make some. When I make so much, I freeze it. I give it away. There's, it's so easy, so quick, so inexpensive. And if you don't even heat it, if you ate it cold... When you take carbohydrates, uh, like bre- potatoes and, and beans and things, and if you eat them cold, they don't, uh, you, don't, you only absorb about 50% of the carbohydrates. How is that? It be, it's called a resistant starch. And the rest of it becomes a prebiotic, which actually feeds the bacteria in your colon. So that's a little trick there. If you have to eat potatoes, if you eat them you know, cold, put them in the refrigerator overnight, you're not going to get as much. Now, you can't put butter and, and, and olive oil and, and, and sour cream on them. That's the key, too, because you got to be careful with fats, fats versus oils. How about that? If it's processed, I don't want you eating it. So butter is processed. If you're trying to lose weight, olive oil can be processed. Now, you've heard me say eat olive oil, eat, eat uh, um, a coconut oil. That's fine. But if our goal is to start trimming down, you can only eat fat in its whole food form, which would be what? Well, nuts, avocados, but don't eat a lot either. Your body has to burn this fat off. And, you know, there's this ketogenic diet where you eat like 80% of your diet fat, but you can't eat any carbohydrates at all then. Then you have to have just vegetables and fat, and that's it. And you will, that'll probably work too because it changes your metabolism. But if you're eating fats and carbohydrates, even a little, your body's going to use the carbohydrates as fuel and store the fat. So just be careful with that. People, they think, well, I'm going to go on this ketogenic diet for three days. No, you either got to do it or not. And then eventually you want to come off it. It's not something you want to do long term. And be careful with foods in your children. You're setting an example for the kids. What you eat and how you respond to what you eat is going to influence your child's response, negative or positive, and your actions, as the saying goes, speak louder than words. When you were little, you probably said, I'm never going to be my parents. And now that you're older, if you're older, because we have a lot of young people listening, have you looked at your life and said, oh, my gosh, I've become my parents? Of course you have. They're the first people that you knew. Or the people that raised you, you watch how they ate, you watch how they argued, they watch, you watch how they slept, you watch how they kept their house. And you become your parents. You have to. It's not an option. And you can break away from some bad things. But some of those, especially food, is, is ingrained in you. And it takes work to break away from that. So think about that next time you're around your kids. All right, let's go uh, take Jason in Atlanta. How can we make your day better? Hi, Dr. Joe. Uh, great to talk to you. Thank you. I wanted to tell you, I, wanted to tell you, uh, I only discovered you a couple of months ago driving to Atlanta listening to your show. And I went home, got on YouTube, and uh, looked at a lot of your videos. And I must say that everything that that I took your advice on has worked. And to my surprise, my six-year-old daughter has got addicted to listening to your YouTube program. And that's all. She, she don't even look at cartoons anymore. She insists <laughs> on it. <laughs> She insists on listening to your program, and even when she goes with my wife to work, my wife is a server. The other waitresses get cracked up because she's in there watching you. And <laughs> uh, she, when we fix something at home that, that she don't think you'd approve of, she goes, Dr. Joe would not like that. <laughs> so I just wanted to tell you about her. 
Jason, you didn't make my day. You made my month, I think. Even a mod smiling over that. That is so awesome. You tell your daughter I said hi, and if you ever want to bring her by, I'd love to meet her. That'd be great. I'll, I'll try and do that. Thank I you. can't stop smiling. Thank you, Jason. Man, I love that, man. I got a six-year-old fan. And it's interesting because Will called earlier, and Will was saying he's one of the few millennials that listen. But I, our boss, Pete, was saying that you know we do have a very varied audience. People that normally wouldn't listen to shows like this do. And what's interesting, too, is usually when it comes to health shows, women watch the shows. And women make the decisions in family for, for uh, health care. And I would say probably 80% of the patients that come to my office either are men or were referred by their wives and girlfriends. Uh, by, by their husbands. I'm sorry, I did it backwards. Um, the men come in, but they're the ones who listen. And they refer their wives and their girlfriends in or their mothers. And it's interesting because it, it's kind of reverse of what it should be. The men who normally wouldn't be listening to shows like this are. So that's what's so cool. And Jason, I tell you what, I, I'm still smiling. Thank you so much. You tell your daughter I said hi, and I'd love to meet her someday. So, and by the way, what Jason was talking about is whenever I do a live lecture, I videotape it and I put it on. It, it, you can go through my website if you want to or go directly to YouTube. And on my website, it has a media and you see Dr. Joe's YouTube channel. And we archive our radio shows there too. So we have thousands of, well, a couple of thousand hours, I guess, of videos and audios that you can either listen to or watch. Some people are visual learner, like Jason's daughter. Some people are, uh, are, are uh, auditory. And the shows are there 24-7. So next time you're driving, next time you're working out, next time you want to do something that's a little different, maybe you're getting bored, go to my YouTube channel. Watch the videos because I can show you things I can't show you on the radio because so much of healthcare is physical, not chemical. My team of doctors in my offices are chiropractors. So if you have a pinched nerve, we need to put the bones back in place. That's physical. Your stomach is up against your diaphragm. We need to pull it away from your diaphragm. Physical. And any bone in the body can come out of place. 206 bones in the body, any one of them can come out of place. Your ankle, your foot, your knee, your skull. So, folks, uh, I, if you want more information, the website is there 24 hours a day, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. You can order my supplements there, my books. If you have questions, send them to me through the website. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. Hey, folks, got to go to a break. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Tell your friends about the show. We're going to be right back. Tell your friends about the show. Hey, folks, thanks for joining me. I am the aforementioned Dr. Joe Esposito, and we are talking today about making the transition to better nutrition and a better lifestyle, too. Because I understand most of you are not going to go, you know, I'm going to do everything Dr. Joe says on the first day, and I'm going to throw out all these years that I've, I've, I've done uh, all these bad things. Most people say, all right, what can I do first? And we talk about what I call the seven deadly sins of nutrition. And those would be alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. And I know you're thinking, my gosh, Dr. Joe, that's everything. Yeah, I know. Most people do eat that. And that's why most people are sick. So again, we don't have a health care crisis in this country. We have a sick care crisis. If everybody was healthy, it wouldn't be a crisis. And so a lot of you are sick because you do things to yourself. Now, sometimes it's, it's, it's out of your uh, control. Uh, let's say you get in a car accident. Somebody hits you from the rear. Well, that can snap your neck and cause the bones in the neck or back to twist out of place and pinch nerves. And that can cause pain. That can cause the organs that are controlled by those nerves to malfunction. It can cause the bones to rub up against each other and wear out, leading to arthritis. So some things are out of your control, and that's why when I always say with car accidents, I've never seen a car accident where the car was damaged, but the occupants weren't. Always, 100% of the time when I evaluate patients, if they're in a car accident, we find problems. They might not have symptoms right away, but we always find bones out of place and, and other problems. So we need to take care of ourselves, even if there's no pain, because 90% of the nerves don't feel pain. So as you transition to a new lifestyle, you got to start thinking about, well, gosh, I, I may have neck pain or back pain. That can be contributing to adverse health, not just pain, but organ malfunction, arthritis. And you can make the transition to better health by taking little baby steps. So you may not have control of the car accident, and that's why you need to come see us in most cases. People come see us when they have injuries. But you have control of what goes in your mouth. You have control of what you're eating. So let's give you some tips on what you can do to, to make better choices. We said earlier, get the bad food out of the house. Get rid of the food you need to stop eating now. Go through your house, pick out the alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, and pastas, and give it to somebody. I know you're thinking, well, who would I want to give it to if I like these people? Well, that's a good point, too. Donate it. There you go. Or just get it out of the house. Another trick. Don't shop when you're hungry. Are you like me? 
If you go shopping when you're hungry, what do you do? Well, you know, I, it's on sale. I can, it, it, it's okay because it's on sale, and I'm just going to have a little bit. No, not a good idea. So don't shop when you're hungry. Another rule, if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. That goes for ingredients, not necessarily the food. But read the ingredients on your food, and if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. Clean out your refrigerator. Get rid of the junk. Goes for your pantry, too. That's what I mean. Get it out of the house. Become knowledgeable about what to eat. You know, we had a caller earlier who said a six-year-old daughter watches me on YouTube instead of cartoons. Well, that's awesome. Talk about positively brainwashing somebody. Man, that's awesome. But learn about these things. That's why we put all our shows on our website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. And we have just go on media. We have hundreds of hours, I guess over 1,000 hours of radio shows now. We have hundreds of hours of videos. And you can watch or listen so you can become knowledgeable, like that little six-year-old. She's going to be the next Dr. Joe. How awesome is that? And then you'll make better decisions because you'll have information. And what I always tell people, because I, I run a business, and people come and say, oh, this happened, that happened. And I'll say, listen, let's get information without emotion. Let's just get the facts, and then we can make a decision. And then we gather the facts. And many times, you've done this before. You've flown off the handle about something. And then when you found everything out, it's like, well, that kind of makes sense now. So get the facts, and then you can make a decision. Get the facts about your health, and then you can make a, a decision. Information without emotion. Now, be open to trying new foods or adding new nutritional sources to your current diet. If you've never had arugula, it's like, it's like a lettuce type food. Try it. You might like it. You might not. That's okay. There's 120,000 foods that you can eat that are good for you. Seven that you shouldn't. Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. So try something. You don't like it. Don't buy it. What I try to do is when I go shopping, if I'm in a you know, health food store, which makes me question what other stores sell if this is a health food store, and I'll try something new. And sometimes I'm impressed and sometimes I'm not. But then I know. Try new things. You know, people say that about Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. When they try it, they go, oh, my gosh, these taste great. But I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and he was saying that once people try the other products on the market and then try yours, now this is him talking to me, he said they'll realize why yours is such so popular. It's popular all over the world. So the Super Greens, the Essential Source, minimum amount of nutrients that you need for a day. And I take it, I, I have it sitting right in front of me right here at the top of every hour when I do a show. I, I, I take a big sip of it. And I'll take it at least once a day, sometimes twice. If I'm going to do a show, if I'm going hiking, if I'm going on a date, if I've got a couple of radio or TV appearances I have to do, I'll do a bunch. I'll do a second dose. A lot of patience. So you're not going to overdose on it. I guess if you drank enough of it, you might, I don't know, get diarrhea or something. But it's really pretty powerful stuff. And once you take it for a few days, you start to realize, man, I, I love the way it tastes. And I feel better. And it's relatively inexpensive, about $2 a day for a scoop of each, a dollar each, dollar something, dollar ten or something like that. So those are on my website, drjoesposito.com, or you can go to Amazon. We have them there as well. And if you haven't read my books, Eating Right for the Health of It, Prescription for Extreme Health, awesome books, if I may say so myself, and they're on the website as well. Make great gifts too, by the way. Let's go back to the calls. If you have a question, the number is 844-44-DR-JOE. That's here at the studio. John, how can we make your day better? I'm doing wonderful, Dr. Joe, but I have a question for you. Go ahead. I was diagnosed eight weeks ago with type A influenza. Yes, and what I want to know is the difference between the type A and type B. Which one is the worst? Is it A, B, or both A and B put together? A is the worst, okay? Uh, type A, uh, well, type B is only found in humans. Type A can be found in animals, too. And type B uh, is usually less severe than type A, but occasionally type B can be pretty bad, too. So if you, mm. if you have the type A, that's the worst one. Yeah, you won, you won the lottery there. What I do, real quick... Um, I have something called Dr. Joe's Wellness Booster, and this is something I take every single day, and I, I can't remember ever getting the flu, but it's uh, Paudiarco, olive leaf extract, suma root, and studies have shown that those herbs can help stimulate white blood cell production. How about that? Yeah, and if I do get sick, I take something called Dr. Joe's Seasonal Tonic, and these are both on my website. Seasonal Tonic is ginger, horseradish, cayenne pepper, onion, and garlic, and we puree that mm -hmm. in an apple cider vinegar, so it tastes like strong salad dressing. Mm -hmm, exactly. Stu and studies have shown that the problem with the flu, it's a virus, 
that garlic can actually fight viral infections, where antibiotics only fight bacterial infections. Now, I'm not How saying about it's. That? A, yeah, so I've got you all covered That's there. That's amazing. Yeah, so go to the website, drjoesposito.com, and you'll see the wellness booster and the seasonal tonic, and I take those on a regular basis throughout the winter. And make sure Thank you're getting you, Dr. about. Thank you, for that wonderful advice. There you go. Make sure you're getting about 5,000 international units of vitamin D as well. Okay, will do. Thanks so much. I appreciate the call, John. Thanks so much. Take care. See, folks, we have answers for just about everything. Oh, music says I got to go to break. All right, folks, if you have a healthcare question, 844-44-DR-JOE, or my website is drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. You can get the supplements there, my books. If you have questions, send me your questions through the website. Uh, if you want to get on the air, if you have a question, 844-44-DR-JOE, which, by the way, rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Very important. We send out a lot of good information there. And tell your friends about the show. We're going to be right back. Your friends about the show. We're going to be right Hey, everybody. Thanks for being here. Do appreciate you taking time out of your day. I am Dr. Joe Esposito. And, oh, somebody's had a question about asthma. They hung up on me there. A lot, a lot. got two questions on uh, Facebook as well on asthma today. Must be a big asthma day. I'll try to answer that for you. Uh, first, let me thank uh, Mandy, Allison, Jason, Chad, Amy, and John, who uh, just liked my page recently, like within the past few minutes on Facebook. So uh, like, my, like me on Facebook or follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. We send out lots of good information there uh, because we want to give you as much information we can as we can so you can get well and stay well and we're talking today about making the transition to better nutrition and how do you do it what's your first steps well the first steps is like we said get the bad food out of the house and what's going to happen is the first couple of days you do this you might have cravings remember there's a difference between craving and hunger Cravings when you're craving something bad and you really want to have it because it's going to get you high and hunger means you just need to nourish yourself and a lot of people who take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source tell me, and I hear this, gosh, several times a day, is they're not as hungry. Because when you're hungry, you're not hungry for food. You're hungry for nutrition. In fact, a friend of mine went to a wedding, um, a week-long wedding out of town, and she said people had commented that she doesn't eat a lot of food. You know, you don't eat a lot. And she goes, well, I really don't need to eat a lot because I get, I, what I'm eating is loaded with nutrition. And one of the gals there is, is into health and nutrition, and she kind of said, exactly, that's exactly right. So you'll find when you start eating better, you eat a lot less food, and it, it's, it's, if nothing else, it's a whole lot cheaper. But you'll probably live a lot longer. You'll feel better. You'll have more energy. Your stomach will flatten out. Your brain will start working better. It's not really a bad place to be. So a couple of things I want you to consider adding to your diet. Okay, well, Like what do you eat? What's a day look like? Well, people say, what's a day look like in your life, Dr. Joe? Super Greens and Essential Source first thing in the morning. Absolutely positively, Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Can't start my day without it. Some people can't have to have coffee to get their day going. I have to have my Super Greens and Essential Source. Maybe a piece of fruit for the morning. Um, I'll sometimes bring a snack. I'll have in my desk at my office, I have uh, some nuts, um, some trail mix maybe, and I'll have a couple of handfuls of that. Salad, I try to have one salad a day somewhere along the line because you want to eat a lot of raw food. Raw food is going to have those nutrients that your body needs. And then dinner I'm usually flexible on. I may skip dinner, you know, if I'm going to go into a intermittent fasting for that day. Um, if I'm going to go out with my friends, I may go out. But I always have something plant-based. I never eat meat. I haven't had any animal products in over 30 years, about 32 years actually. So, uh, yeah, 32 years, yeah. So, uh, you know, you can go Chinese, Thai, and, and I find that the, the ethnic foods, there's a lot of plant-based foods there uh, because meat's expensive, not only to buy but to raise. It takes a lot of water and soil and, and farmland. So a lot of ethnic countries, the poorer countries, actually have the healthiest foods. So you might want to consider that, Chinese, Thai, uh, Indian, uh, Ethiopian. had Ethiopian a couple of nights ago. If you've never had Ethiopian food, absolutely spectacular absolutely one of my favorite foods in the world and they, they always have a, a, a plant dish usually a, a um, like a sampler plat, platter of all of the, the beans and the lentils and the, uh, the vegetables just spectacular so i strongly recommend if you've never had ethiopian food give it a try it's a lot of fun you eat with your hands and it's just different flavors that you're not used to so we said earlier try new things and if you don't like it you didn't like it so what but if you do like it well then you really want to do that i find when my stomach is pushed up against my diaphragm, I can't digest food as well, and so I might get bloating or acid reflux or burping or heartburn, but I also find I get ravenous. And so many times if, I'm not, if my stomach isn't where it's supposed to be, I need to have one of my doctors massage my stomach away from my diaphragm, and then they adjust me. They adjust the spine because the nerves from the spine control the organs. And when you're under stress, physical stress, like pinch nerves, your body craves more food. When you're not under stress, physical, chemical, or emotional stress, it's a lot easier to eat less food. So let's fix the physical problems 
and that's going to take away a lot of physical stress. Go back to the callers. If you have a question, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. Tammy, how can we make your day better? Hey, Dr. Joe, thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. Just a quick question. I'm in my early 50s, recently diagnosed with osteopenia, and I have Hashimoto's disease. Always concerned about taking supplements that I'm, I don't want to interfere with the medicines I take. Sure. So what would you recommend? Um, uh, Hashi- I know you're talking about your greens and the sure. essential source. Are those okay? Absolutely, yes. Hashimoto's autoimmune conditions, so you got to calm down the immune system. I think I did a show last week on the immune system. If you go to my website, we have uh, um, I, that show will be archived there. Um, but you want to stay away from inflammatory foods. So the first two things I would give up if I were you is wheat and dairy products. Those are the two highly inflammatory foods. You have to make sure, and you have to make sure you're getting enough iodine in your body because the, the thyroid gland needs iodine. So uh, Dr. Joe's Essential uh, Super Greens has dults in it, which is a great source of iodine. So that would be two things I do. Osteopenia is usually due to a high acid diet. When you eat the, the seven deadly sins, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, you're, you need to neutralize those acids. And the body uses calcium as its primary neutralizing agent. So by switching to a more alkaline-based diet, which by definition would be a plant-based diet, you're going to help uh, you kill two birds with one stone. And that's the direction I would go. And then I would check the nerves in the neck. The, ner- the nerves in the middle of the neck control the thyroid. And I've had a lot of people with thyroid conditions that had a pinched nerve in the neck that may help calm down the, the Hashimoto's issue. And so should I be taking calcium supplements, especially if I can't take, I, I, you know, if I can't, I don't do a lot of calcium vegetables, really. Yeah, so. well, yeah if you're going to do calcium supplements, make sure it's not calcium carbonate. You want to do calcium citrate or calcium lactate because calcium carbonate can actually block up your calcium receptor sites and prevent you from absorbing it. But the key here is not that you need more calcium, you need less acid. In most cases. So if you're going to do a calcium supplement, citrate or, or lactate, and we have those are at our offices, um, and definitely stay away from the acid foods, and then you'll have plenty of calcium. Because bones are made of a lot more than just calcium. Magnesium, boron, silica, you need vitamin D. So just taking calcium isn't going to build bones. You have to have a whole spectrum of things going on to build the bone. And should I be taking cal- or D on a daily basis? Absolutely. In the winter, I take about 5,000 international units a day, um, and I think you should too. Make sure it's vitamin D3, not vitamin D2. And then in the summer, try to get out, you know, get some sunlight about 20 minutes a day. You won't need to take that supplement. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Tammy. I appreciate the call. Ah, so much fun. What a great job I have. Ahmad, don't we have the greatest job in the world, I think, you we and I? We really do. We do. Every, everybody's happy. Everybody. In fact, uh, speaking of the boss, uh, he said the other day, he goes, you know, everybody loves you. He says, we don't get, people send us emails about how great your show is. And I said, good, we like that. He goes, yeah, we, we, well, I like that too. He says, keep up the good work. I said, thank you. They love you, but not me. No, they love you. Ahmad, you're, you're the, <laughs> without you, I can't do this. Ahmad makes those buttons push like, Dr. Joe, go to break, like he's telling me right now. So folks, got to go to break. If you have a question, the number is 844-44-DR-JOE. Uh, that number rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. My website, drjoesposito.com. You can order Super Greens, Essential Source, um, the supplements, uh, Wellness Booster, uh, Seasonal Tonic, and also on Amazon. If you have an Amazon account, you can order there as well. If you have questions, call us here or, or send me questions through the website, drjoesposito.com. I'm more than happy to answer questions for you, your friends, and your family. Hey, folks, don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. I am so glad you're spending a little time with me today. It always makes me so happy. I love when the phones light up and uh, you follow me on Facebook and li- like follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram. I love that because I could see when I'm on the, li- on the air and just goes click, 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 click. It's so cool because we do send out a lot of good information there. Um, and sometimes we have specials on our supplements or maybe I'm doing a live lecture. You, I'd love to have you come out to the live lectures if you've never been to one. They're so much fun. Um, because we give you information and I can show you things that I can't show you on the radio because every time patients come in the office, you listeners come in, they'll say, wow, that's so cool. We show them how we can test uh, for pinched nerves and how we can test muscle strength and we can see if there's misalignments and everybody's just blown away by it. It's like, I, I, that's amazing. And that's why I can't do that on radio because it's physical, not, uh, you know, or, or auditory. So. Uh, so we're talking today about making the transition to better nutrition and uh, we're talking about the things you need to do. So a couple of things I want you to consider is I want you to start drinking uh, more water. I recommend about eight or 10 glasses a day. Distilled water is the best, but distilled water is very impractical. You have to distill it. There's a lot of waste. Uh, it takes time. So filtered water is the next best, and I have a water filters on my website that I may recommend for you, drjoesposito.com, and at least get one for your sink. I have one for my whole house, but I'd recommend at least a sink water filter in your kitchen 
to give yourself pure water because someone called before about Hashimoto's disease and fluorine, chlorine, and bromine also look like iodine and they're all called haloids. And when iodine gets into your thyroid gland, the thyroid uses it to make hormones. Well, if you're absorbing fluorine, chlorine, and bromine, and bromine is used as a dough conditioner, so if you're eating commercial breads or you know fast food breads, usually there's bromine in there, and it can, those chlorine, fluorine, and bromine can block up your iodine, or your iodine receptor sites in your, in your thyroid and prevent you from absorbing it properly. And the other problem is most people don't get enough iodine. I mean, what do you eat with iodine in it? Name one thing. Salt. That's how most people get their iodine. That's why they put, you ever wonder why they put iodine in salt? Because uh, studies have shown years ago that people in the, in the center of the country were developing goiters. The thyroid wasn't getting enough iodine, so the thyroid was getting bigger. That's what organs do if they start to malfunction. They get bigger. And so as the thyroids got bigger, we said, what can we do? How can we get iodine into people in the, in the heartland? So somebody came up with a great, great idea. Let's put iodine in salt. Well, it's not a good iodine. It's a cheap iodine that they use in the salt. And it's enough to prevent goiter. It's not enough, I feel, in most cases, to make the thyroid work at its optimum level. That's why in Dr. Joe's Essential Source, uh, in the Super Greens, I'm sorry, we add iodine. We add dulse, which is seaweed, which is a great source of iodine. So that's why another reason you should take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source every day. At least get some iodine in you. And so you got to get the body working normally to, fun to get back to its normal function. And so drinking water is great. Uh, like I said, and if you're drinking non-distilled water or non-filtered water, you may be getting chlorine fl and fluorine that can be blocking up your thyroid gland. If you're going to drink uh, uh, milk, I don't recommend you drink cow's milk. How about almond milk, rice milk? They're very inexpensive, by the way. Uh, certain stores will even sell for $2 for a big, ga big half a gallon of it. And it's not a health food. Now, if I say you take super greens, essential source, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, these are loaded with nutrients. Almond milk, rice milk, coconut milk, these are not health foods, but they're not bad either. So they're kind of like neutral. And I do it because I like my super greens and essential source with a little milk in it, shaking up. Um, I'll eat oatmeal periodically, and if just plain old, old-fashioned oats, organic, of course. And you don't have to cook them, by the way. They're already cooked. They're steamed. They're steamed and flattened. That's why they're little flat disks. And I'll maybe add some organic raisins to them, a little coconut milk, ramen milk, and that's a quick snack. You know, you go home, I don't know what to eat, I'm in a rush, I'm sucking little hunger pangs. You just throw that together real quick and easy. So don't look at it as a health food, but it's not something that's bad for you either. If you're doing dairy, I'm not a big fan of dairy. Uh, that can cause down, that has downsides. The, the other ones really don't. Uh, if you're going to do juices, I recommend vegetable juices only. I don't recommend you do fruit juices because fruit juices are loaded with sugar. And we're going to talk about that if we have time today. Uh, drinks that have as much or more sugar than soda, and one of them is going to be fruit juices. So orange juice in the morning, not a good idea. Orange in the morning, fine, because it has the fiber and the nutrients in it to push everything through your colon. And most commercial juices that you buy are pasteurized, and when you heat things, you destroy a lot of the nutrients. Let's go back to the callers. Chris, how can we make your day better? Hi. Do you have any tips on how we can massage our own stomachs away from our diaphragm? Oh, Chris, if I knew that, I would do it for my own stomach. I've tried every possible contortion, yoga maneuver, uh, tantric twists that I can come up with, and there is no way you can pull your own stomach down, believe me, because if there was, I have that condition, and if I had it, I would do it. Um, but okay. all my doctors are trained to do it. All my doctors are my personal physicians. Uh, when I, you know, I always say all my doctors are as good or better than I am that work in my offices. So if you go to the website, you can read the article on what it looks like. Um, but you really have to have somebody else do it for you. And other, you got to know what you're doing. It's not something you can teach your, you know, your friend to do. So unfortunately, so. Oh, okay. Sorry, Thank Chris. You. All right. Thanks for the call. All right. Let's see. Yeah. We'll take another call. What the heck? 844-44-DR-JOE if you have a question. AJ, how can we make your day better? I know another Joe. It's my first time on the show. I'm enjoying it. Oh well, great. Welcome. Glad you could join us. Yes, I have a question. I, how, using nutrition, would you be able to lose sudden weight that just weight gain? Well, most people, if they're animal eaters, um, have about uh, eight to ten pounds of undigested rotten meat in their colon. So just by going to a more plant-based diet, the fiber is going to push everything through. And a lot of people say, well, Dr. Joe, I, I went vegetarian or vegan, and I lost so much weight. Well, you really didn't lose weight. You lost junk in your colon. 
Um, mm. I have a product that's called Dr. Joe's Intestinal Cleanser. And if the bowels aren't moving two to three times a day, yes, I said a day, I recommend people take Dr. Joe's Intestinal Cleanser as they transition to a better diet and then come off it. You won't need it after a while. So just cleaning okay, out the colon wow. is great, but that doesn't solve the problem. That's just a kind of a jump start. But going right. to a more plant-based diet and staying away from processed oils, especially if you're trying to lose weight, um, and mm. eating a more plant-based diet is going to solve the problem, and just staying away from mm. processed foods. Anything that comes in a package, you know, cookies, cakes, donuts, pretzels, potato chips, you just got to cut them out. You can't cut back because you're going to keep craving them. Cut it out. Okay. And if you go to my website, drjoesposito.com, I think there's a link there, and, uh, and I'll send you uh, – oh, actually, this is what happened. Sign up for my newsletter. It's right on the front page. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure we'll send you a link to a lecture that I did called So What Can I Eat? And that's we'll send that to you as a link. And if you go to the website, I've done several shows on weight loss. So just click on those shows and listen to them. I think you'll be very, very happy with the results. Will do. Great. Thanks for calling, AJ. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you listen Thanks. every week now, okay? I will. Thanks certainly. a lot. Bye-bye. Boy, a lot of good callers today. I even said that to Rachel. Rachel's our screener in there, folks, so give Rachel something to do. Number here is 844-44-DR-JOE. If I don't get you on the air, you can send me questions through my website, drjoesposito.com. Um, like I said, follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, and we send out lots of cool stuff there as well. So we're talking today about making the transition to better nutrition. And, you know, some people say, well, Dr. Joe, water's boring. I find water to be boring. Well, I understand that. How about some seltzer? Now, there's a difference between seltzer and club soda. <gasps> Another fun fact, Ahmad, do you know the difference between seltzer and club soda? Uh, does one have more bubbles? Than one has salt. Oh. Club soda has... Ahmad, how long have you been my producer? You should know this by now. Uh. Minus five points for Ahmad today. So <laughs> club, soda has, um, club soda has salt in it and seltzer doesn't. So do the seltzer. Uh, it's slightly acidic. But again, if that's your biggest sin, don't worry about it. I like seltzer, to be honest with you, or, or bubbly water. So, folks, got to go to break. If you have a question, 844-44-DR-JOE. That number uh, also rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. When you want to place your order for Super Greens, Essential Source, a Wellness Booster, Seasonal Tonic, Intestinal Cleanser, my books, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, also available on Amazon if you have an Amazon account. Hey, do me a favor. Tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. Caught a mod dancing in the booth over there, so I got to laugh out of that there. <laughs> I wasn't dancing. I was doing the, the cross crawl. Cross crawl, which yeah. does what? Uh, boosts your brain. There you go. That's my producer, folks, a mod, the best-looking producer in radio in the world. That's right. And uh, that's right. If you don't know what the cross crawl is, you, you cross your right arm to your left when you're marching in place. Right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg. And it's in my book, Prescription for Extreme Health. And it, what it does, it integrates your brain. It uses both sides of the brain simultaneously. Most of us use just one side of the brain and then the other. We segregate our brains when in reality we need to integrate our brains. And so by doing the cross crawl can actually give you energy and improve balance, uh, help your brain function more efficiently. So it's a neat little thing. And that's what the book Prescription for Extreme Health is all about. It's little tips telling you how to get your life better. So if you haven't read the book yet, you need to, and it's on, uh, it's on my website, drjoesposito.com, also available on Amazon. So there you go, Ahmad. Great, great segue to give me a transition to promote the book. There you go. That's why he is the number one producer in radio right now. Yes. And Rachel's in there hanging out, waiting for calls. Uh, so we're ta talking to you how to transition to better health. So for breakfast, like I said, I have Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, always, 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 um, and maybe a piece of fruit, lunch. You want to eat a minimum of four hours between meals because if you're eating a plant-based diet, it takes about three or four hours to get the food from your stomach to your small intestine, and then you can put more food in. The problem is this. If you eat and then an hour later eat again and then an hour later eat again, eat again, the stomach is still digesting the first meal, so it's partially digested. Then you're dumping new food on top of it. Then you're dumping new food on top of that, and nothing really gets fully digested or properly digested, I should say, because the stomach is not sure what, what stage of digestion it's in. So give your stomach a chance to empty and get into the small intestine, and that's why if you have uh, acid reflux or heartburn, many times it's not from too much stomach acid. It's from too little stomach acid, and the food is sitting in there rotting because the stomach is all spasmed and slammed up against your diaphragm. So chiropractically, we check the spine to see if there's any pinched nerves going to the stomach. Then we massage the stomach away from the diaphragm, and then we would tell you, spread out your meals a little bit. Wait till you're hungry to eat. You don't have to eat just because it's noon or just because it's 5 o'clock. 
It's okay to skip a meal. You're not going to starve. So it's not just what you eat, it's when you eat. Once again, four hours to dinner, eat a smaller meal than lunch, and then wait at least three hours before you go to bed. So give your body an opportunity to ingest, digest, and absorb the nutrients from one meal before you jump into the other one. You'll be fast. If you do just that, even if you don't change your diet, at least take super greens an essential source, though. If you don't change your diet, at least spreading out the meals is going to give your body the chance to uh, better digest the food. Uh, eat slowly with each meal. Take about five breaths before each meal. Take a break. Go into what's called the parasympathetic mode. There's two types of nerves in your body. One is called the sympathetics. They speed you up. And the parasympathetics slow you down. Most of us are in the sympathetic mode, running around, even if you're at work, maybe you, you get your half-hour lunch break, you're running to a restaurant, you're on a date, whatever it is, you're in the sympathetic mode, and now you're going to try to do a parasympathetic function, which is digestion. Take five deep breaths, very deep, and hold them for a few seconds, and then let it out. It'll slowly kick you into the parasympathetic mode. It takes 20 minutes to get the message from your stomach to your brain. So eat slowly, you're going to eat a lot less food. You're going to save a ton of money. Then you And the super greens and essential source aren't expensive, but you'll have money to buy the super greens and the essential source and get chiropractic care and have money left over for nice presents and go on vacation. I mean, think about how much money you spend on food. And if you can cut that down, you'd be amazed how much money you'll have to do other fun things. Use a smaller plate. Studies have shown if you use a big plate, you're probably going to eat more food. Uh, where are we? Okay, exercise. Didn't talk about that yet. Simple things. I'm not a big fan of going to the gym and, you know, putting on my uh, Olivia Newton-John, let's get physical music and jumping. And Mod's got a visual in his head now, don't you? Me and uh, tights and, uh, and a little headband on. <laughs> yeah, that might be your Halloween costume this that year. That could be. Now, I'm going to tell you a story, Mod. I think I've told you this before. I met Olivia Newton-John. Five years later, she got divorced. I think I might have been the trigger for that. I think the 45 seconds we spent together for that picture I have in my office, I think that was the thing that triggered the It just took her five years to realize. I think that's, I mean, you know, in my mind, that's what happened. So. <laughs> but park far away and walk. That's something very simple that you can do. Think of excuses to keep your body in motion. I'm going to take the stairs today. I'm going to park far away and walk. If you got a break for whatever, maybe you're waiting at the doctor's office. You're waiting to get your tires changed or something. Don't just sit there. You know, if you go to one of those big box stores and get your tires changed, that's where the best prices are usually, walk around the store. Go outside. Walk around the building a few times. I know if I go to get my hair cut, if there's a wait, I'll say, listen, here's my phone number. Call me when, when it's my turn. And just keep the body in motion the best you possibly can. Go out and do yard work. Do housework. Well, that's kind of big, too, because you get a lot of things done then. But get out and move. That's going to be so important. You want to rev up your metabolism. And you can do that with things like Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, Hot Pepper, will increase your metabolism. That's kind of nice. Uh, so if you like spicy foods, good for you. Keep doing it. So what I want you to do is this, and we do this with all of our patients. I have them write down everything they eat. And on my website, if you go to patient forms, you'll see something called the diet diary and the systems survey. And the system survey, if you come in as a patient, you want me to do a nutritional analysis, fill that out for me, and then we'll do a computer analysis with you. But if nothing else, just go to the website and download the Diet Diary. It's yours. It's free. I'm not going to – I don't know who downloads it or not. And just start writing down everything you eat. And that trick alone is going to help you eat better because when people start writing things down, and when you come in as a patient, you're going to tell me this, well, Dr. Joe, this wasn't a good week. So you realize what you're doing. I say, listen, I've been doing nutrition evaluations for over three decades now. Nobody's ever had a good week. So just start writing it down and have an awareness. I eat really well, Dr. Joe. Oh, yeah, I forgot I had that coconut cake when I was at the studio, and I forgot I had uh, the Mary's birthday, and then I forgot that uh, Jim brought in those, those chocolate truffles, and, oh, yeah, we did go out for fast food that day. So you'll be amazed by just writing down what you eat how much better your diet's going to be because now suddenly you have to be responsible to someone. That someone is you. You're going to keep an eye on yourself, and you're going to go, oh, yeah, well, that makes sense now. So try that little trick, and then go to my website, listen to the archive radio shows, watch the videos, uh, send me questions if you have questions through the website, drjoesposito.com. If you want to order Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, the Wellness Booster, the Seasonal Tonic, the Intestinal Cleanser, my books, 
drjoeesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe with the number one Dr. Joe in the world. Or you can go to Amazon. It's also available on Amazon. All my products are on Amazon as well. And in the next coming weeks, we're adding six new supplements uh, to my product line. Very exciting for circulation, for, for prebiotics, probiotics, vitamin D. It's good stuff. Folks, got to run. If you have any questions, if you need me, drjoeesposito.com. Just Google Dr. Joe. Hey, tell your friends about the show. We'll catch you next time. About the show. We'll catch you next time.